all right uh, hi everyone um, a very good day uh, to who's over uh, watching this video um, i represent fusion uh, uh, mesh it's a channel to educate uh, customers about cloud native uh, architecture uh, the concepts like service mesh and envoy and today i have uh, ravi varma who has a decade plus experience in the engineering and software engineering and uh, architecting uh, he has uh, spent uh, you know uh, many years uh, in multiple roles like uh, r&d engineer and solution architect at a large enterprise like arison samsung ge and now he is working for baxter uh, on you know right now on ravi has uh, a passion passion for uh, open source technologies uh and uh, uh, he'll be sharing his uh, understanding and knowledge about envoy proxies uh over to you uh, ravi thank you rashi hello everyone so we'll be starting today to discuss about what is envoy proxy and why do we need to use it so without wasting much time we'll be going to start okay so nowadays if as we see the trends are emerging like most of the applications are growing on the cloud and then most of the companies are using cloud like now that on prem servers and all kind of thing now it is not in much use so more and more cloud and then all those applications will be developed for the cloud so that that's the first thing the second thing comes into picture when the application becomes very big big and big it is very difficult to manage a a very large application which is a, a monolithic application like it is doing everything and if some issues comes into that one then it is nightmare to debug it and to find the issue so that's why it is broken into pieces smaller smaller pieces those are called basically micro services and those micro services interact with each other to perform or to achieve a larger goal to achieve that one we need to break the basically services into even smaller parts those are called modular it is it allows application to be, to be developed independently like a particular module can be developed by another developer and and like all microservices can be developed by different different teams and it can be integrated at the end to perform the to basically to achieve the larger goal now going to the next slide so as we understand now like if the applications are going to be smaller smaller lot of like components will be there so they need to talk to each other share the information so that it can be processed by one service and this and the solutions can be or the processing after processing the feedback can be given to the back to the again the, to the previous service which requested so for that we need a channel kind of thing or we need a interface for that they can communicate so those are the apis so they talk to each other like two services will be talking to each other based on some exposed apis so now that as it is increasing so we so now the deployments come into picture like if the application is very enterprise application is very big so those can be running at the multiple cloud services not only the intra it should be inter both like inter intra clusters it can even like one application is hosted at aws the another application can be hosted even at the google cloud and they should be able to talk to each other to basically communicate to share the information so what happens if the, the application as it is gro growing very big and big so what happens the developers the problem comes to the developers so now developers has to to find out the problem basically they need to write the logic for the business logic to achieve something after that along with that they need to write the logic even for the communication so that's a very frustrating for them like they need to manage both the things so to solve those problems we'll be seeing how that anoy proxy solves the problems in the next few slides so here comes the anoy proxy so it solves basically it it isolates the networking part of the application and developers need to only focus on the application part 
then you not to worry about where is the another service running whether it's running on the aws whether it's running on the google cloud whether it's running on on prem no need to worry about it just write it and then all other thick the communication part will be taken care by the annoy proxy so that's where it comes into picture so we'll be digging more into this one and then understanding how it works really okay so i'll be opening my whiteboard so that i can explain it how it works so imagine a situation we have uh, suppose four microservices they need to talk to each other or even we can we can imagine more so now these are the microservices they need to talk to each other over some channel so even it can become become more messy if we like even the solution like the problem could be like even this guy needs to talk to this guy so this this way like our our communication channel will be like uh, more problematic and it it need to have a dedicated channel to discuss with each other so so now the problem is as this servers or microservices services will be running on the cloud anyone in the middle can infer the information which is getting shared between these microservices and the information can be leaked and used in another way so so that that's that's the first problem the second problem is now this services service let me this service so suppose one developer is developing this service i'll name it a and this service need to talk to b so what what this developer has to do it Develop, this developer has to write the application logic for this service a and then plus he or she needs to write the application or the logic for the communication over the channel so basically this channel what protocol it need to use so and where all the security things need to be handled by the developer itself and the same thing goes here so for all all the communications everywhere the developer itself needs to make sure that all this 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 channel is secure plus the communication part whatever it is writing here it goes into the same protocol like this guy is also talking the same language than this one so that only then it can be understood otherwise it will break the communication so that's one thing so it applies to all everything like a b c b okay so now the problem is this guy has to secure it because it cannot keep it open so in that case what will happen a has to write the information lock it so maybe we can imagine that as a key and that that information need to be shared to b and that box will be opened by b and then read with the same key so that like and they both share the same key so that that this guy can lock it and this guy can unlock it so that now we are making the channel secure so this is where the tls comes into picture transport layer security so this takes care of the securing the channel so now as i have developed here uh, nine 
suppose imagine we have thousands and thousands of services and they need to talk to each other. So what will happen? Each developer has to make sure all those thousands they are following the correct rule to encrypt it and send the data to the another channel to the uh, to the another service and it is decrypted properly. Otherwise it will they will not be able to talk to each other. So that that's becomes very messy for the developer to manage both the things. So isn't it good if we have someone like some helper kind of guy? Or a service which what will happen? It sits near to this this one. And then takes care of. All networking related things, so developer this developer has to only write the application logic, but all other communication related thing network transferring encrypting and all those things need to be taken care by the. Helper. So in that case, the life of the developer will become easy, plus the maintenance of the application itself becomes easy because it is having only the application logic and the networking part is separated out. So if any issues comes into picture, so it will be very easy to find it out whether the, the problem is with the application or with the network logic. So now this forms a kind of atomic structure. Along with microservice and the helper. And this helper is nothing but. And my proxy. And as it is sitting next to the service, this is also called sidecar. So, and all those things need to be deployed to all the services, like all the sidecars need to be deployed along with all the services so that they can talk to each other over the proxy. And this pattern of the deploying the sidecar is called sidecar deployment. Yes, so this is this is all about the NI proxy, how it works and why do we need it? Basically, why do we need it to manage all these services very easily because the developer has not now need not to worry about the channel or the encryption or everything and plus security will come into picture at the large scale. It can be deployed at at any scale, so that's where NY comes into picture. OK, so I'll now go back again to. To the slide. So along with that, what we discussed just now, it provides even it is having even more features which can be utilized in a different scenarios like it even works as a load balancing to. To distribute the loads as now nowadays that all the applications are going to be distributed systems. So the load to a particular service can be transferred to the other service so that it can be handled in an efficient way. So now we saw just now like it uses the microservice so it can be utilized like from migrating from monolithic to microservices based architecture. It is very easy to go with the proxy. OK, yeah, so so the the discussion which we just saw it was related to the sidecar deployment, but it is it can be used even for the API gateways and that pattern is called edge proxy. So in that case, the get the API gateway is is deployed in such a way that it can talk to the external world and then talk to the internal world. Internal world is like the mess of services and that this one we just saw like it forms if we go back to our screen if you see this forms a mess and this is nothing but a call a service mess because these are the services and they are forming a mess so that's the name comes into picture a service mess we'll be talking about this into more details in the future sessions more and more so as we see now with the like distributed and the broken up the pieces separating the networking plus application 
separate it out now developers need not to worry about it so no more frustrated developers will be there thank you let's meet the next slides <laughs>